Hi, I'm Tracker Rob, a naturalist and outdoor guide for Trails Education Days. I'm here to introduce you to Animal Actors of Hollywood, who will then introduce you to seven native animals of California, five of which are native to Caneo Open Space. Can you tell me, of the seven, which two are not native to this area? Find out and tell me at the end of this video. Hello and welcome. My name is Denise. We are from Animal Actors of Hollywood. We train animals for television and movies, but we also do educational shows like this one. The animals that you're going to learn about today are wild, and as cute as they are, they do not make good pets. These animals require special training and knowledge to handle them. They also require federal, state, and city licenses from different governments. The animals that you're going to learn about today are the type that you may see walking through a park in California, taking a hike in nature, or maybe even your own backyard. So let's meet Ozzy the opossum. He, like many of our animals, is a rescued animal and cannot be released back into the wild. Opossums are the only marsupials that live in the area. Marsupials are animals that raise their babies in their pouches on their stomach. They are considered omnivores. They like to eat bugs, snails, crickets, small animals, fruit, and vegetables, and maybe even dog food that you've forgotten left outside. Opossums have opposable thumbs just like humans, which means they can touch their thumbs to each of their fingers. This helps them hold on to their food. They have very strong, very flexible tails, but they cannot hang from these tails like you have seen in the cartoons. Their strong tail is used to stabilize their position when climbing and walking. They do have poor eyesight, but they do have 52 razor sharp teeth. One of their defense mechanisms against their predators is to play dead. I'm sure a lot of you have heard the term play possum and that's where it comes from. They cannot jump. They'll get into trash cans that have been knocked over or they'll drop into a trash can from a fence above, sometimes getting trapped. Opossums lived during the age of dinosaurs and they're one of Earth's oldest surviving mammal families. Humans, cars, dogs, and cats are the demise to many opossums who rarely live more than two years in the wild. Please welcome Toto, our desert tortoise. He's 40 years old and he came to us 20 years ago because of an injury. By accident, a motorcycle ran over him and cracked his shell. Fortunately, we were able to repair it with fiberglass. If you look close in this area, you can see where the original crack was. Slow growing and long lived, the desert tortoise is the largest terrestrial turtle in the United States. If you've ever wondered what the difference is between a tortoise and a turtle, tortoises have a high dome shell, elephant shaped front legs, they live on land, and they only go to water for a fresh drink or to bathe. They do not have webbed feet, they cannot swim. Whereas turtles, their life is adapted to living in the water. They can live up to 50 years in the wild and longer in captivity, often up to 80 years old. They're an herbivore. They like to eat grass, flowers, fruit, and cactus. And this type of food contains moisture, giving them the ability to go up to one full year without needing access to fresh water. They do not have teeth. They use their beak to grind their food. And even though you don't see any external ears, they do have very good hearing. They have the ability to completely withdraw their head and limbs inside their shell, and this helps them protect them from predators. That's an example. They have a short tail and they use their claws to aid in digging burrows because the front limbs act like shovels. The scales on their limbs protect them from any scratchy vegetation they come across in their environment and it also helps to hold in moisture. Cleverly, the tortoises will dig basins to catch rainwater and they remember exactly where the basins are when they need a fresh drink. 
They're also called a gopher tortoise because like gophers, they live in the burrows. With 95% of their life spent underground, they have the ability to survive on very little food. They're cold-blooded animals, which means they cannot regulate their own body temperature. If it's cold outside, they will be cold. If it's warm outside, they will be warm. Food is scarce in the winter. They will hibernate for nine months in their burrows with a wall of dirt at the entrance to keep out rain and cold to survive the entire winter season. But come spring, they will emerge to bask in the warm sun and jumpstart their metabolism. Welcome Sly, our gopher snake. The non-venomous gopher snake is commonly misidentified as a rattlesnake due to its similar coloration and defensive behavior when threatened. When gopher snakes do feel a threat, they will flatten their head, hiss loudly, and shake their tail rapidly, giving a very convincing imitation of being a rattlesnake. The best reaction you can do when you come across a snake is to back off, give it space, and walk away. The gopher snake is the most common snake you will see in California, and they are most active during the day. They've been observed crawling across trails, roads, and even your suburban backyards looking for rodents. They will eat small mammals, birds, lizards, and of course, gophers. They live up to 15 years in the wild and up to 33 years in captivity. Snakes have an excellent sense of smell, poor eyesight, and limited hearing. To help with their smell, they have what is called the Jacobson's organ. It's a pair of organs inside the roof of their mouth. If you're ever seeing a snake flick its tongue out, what it's actually doing is collecting chemical samples from their environment. They then take these samples back to the Jacobson's organ, and it determines whether what they're smelling is prey. If you notice, they do not have any external ears, so to help them here, they detect vibrations from the ground and water. Their entire body is covered in scales. Without this protective armor, they wouldn't be able to slither across rough roads, bark, or even hot desert sand. And on the belly, they have rougher scales, which help them to grip rough branches and push off when they need to move. A few times a year they will shed, and you always know if they're going to shed because the eyes will get cloudy and they'll be blind. Why is that, you may wonder? Well, snakes actually don't have eyelids. That's why you'll never see a snake blink. What they have are clear scales on their eyes called spectacle scales. And when they get ready to shed, they will rub against an object near their mouth and slide out of that dead skin just like taking off a pair of socks. Welcome Penny or Porcupine. Porcupines are the second largest rodent in North America, with the beaver being the largest. Porcupines are not considered aggressive, however they will attack if they feel threatened. When they feel a threat, they will curl up in a ball to protect their soft bellies. A lot of people think that they can shoot their quills, but actually they cannot. Nature gave them quills to protect themselves. When an animal comes to bite them, such as a dog or coyote, they'll get a mouthful of barbed stickers. Their quills are made of keratin, like our hair and our nails, but stiffer. They have 30,000 quills covering their entire body, except for their tummies. You may be able to see that she actually has orange teeth. It's not because she needs to go to the dentist, it's because her teeth never stop growing. Unlike our teeth that will grow a bit then stop, hers will grow her entire life. The name porcupine actually came from the French word meaning thorny pig. They live up to 18 years in the wild and they're mostly nocturnal, meaning they're most active at night. The food that they eat helps to trim their teeth since the teeth never stop growing. Things such as leaves, twigs, plants, and vegetables. And some of Penny's favorite foods are carrots, yams, and corn on the cob. Our next animal is an animal you may have easily seen in your own backyard. This is Gretel, our tree squirrel. Tree squirrels will live four years in the wild and 10 years in captivity. They got their name because of the amount of time they spend in trees. 
They like to build their nests in abandoned woodpecker holes and any natural openings they may find. Like the porcupine, their teeth do not stop growing and the food that they eat helps to trim the teeth. Foods such as nuts, berries, fruit, and seeds. Squirrels prepare for winter by burying food so they have a store of food when supplies are scarce. Babies are kits and when they're born their eyes are closed so they depend on mom for two to three months. These rodents have remarkable little bodies. Their front feet are padded to cushion their jumps up to 20 feet and they use this fluffy tail like a parachute to balance themselves during high leaps. Their eyes are high on the head and on each side, so they're able to see a large amount of their surroundings, always on the lookout for predators. They're also fantastic runners, running up to 20 miles per hour. Squirrels communicate with a wide range of calls called barks, but the main form of communication is the tail. The tail will twitch when they become suspicious of any threat. The most important animals to help the spread of oak trees. They store the acorns in the ground, only recovering about 70% of them, allowing the forgotten 30% to grow into healthy trees. Most people recognize raccoons by the black mask that runs across their eyes and their bushy ring tails. Their front paws resemble human hands in their dexterity, and this makes raccoons very skillful at many tasks. They're an inquisitive, intelligent animal, and they like to make their home in hollow trees, burrows, or even in your house. You can find them in the attic, chimney, and under the porch. The raccoon's most heightened sense is their sense of touch. It's very sensitive front paws, and this sensitivity increases underwater. When able, they like to examine objects underwater. They will live two to three years in the wild and up to 20 years in captivity. They are omnivorous, meaning they like to eat fruit, plants, nuts, berries, insects, frogs, and eggs. But they're also an opportunistic eater, meaning if the food is easy to find, they're gonna find it. That's why it's common to see raccoons scavenging through your garbage cans in the neighborhood. They're nocturnal, meaning they're active at night. The babies are called kits, and they will stay in the den for eight to 10 weeks with their mom. They do not hibernate, but they will sleep for weeks in the den. Did you know that raccoons can run up to 15 miles per hour? And they're good swimmers. They can stay in the water for several hours. The great horned owl is the most common owl of the Americas, easily recognizable by its feather tufts. These tufts are called plumicorns and they resemble horns. They'll live 10 to 15 years in the wild and up to 30 years in captivity. Largely nocturnal, they can be difficult to spot, but after dark, they're often heard vocalizing their well-known hoots. There we go. They have a facial disc that serves as a radar dish. This disc receives signals to pinpoint where their prey is, even the direction and speed that the prey is traveling. They have very sensitive hearing. They can hear things that humans cannot. And this good hearing also helps them detect their prey. Their body is covered in loose, soft feathers. They don't make much noise if any when flying. This silent flight helps them to sneak up and grab their prey. Striking from above, they use these strong talons to kill and carry animals several times their own weight. They eat raccoons, rabbits, squirrels, birds, other owls, and even small dogs and cats. Owls have an incredible digestive system. Oftentimes, they will swallow their prey whole and regurgitate what is called pellets. These pellets are made out of bone, fur, and any unwanted material of their meal. I hope you have enjoyed learning about the animals. It should be noted that if you come across an animal in your yard or out in the wild, even if it looks hurt or is a baby, that you should not try to touch it or feed it. If it's a baby, chances are the parents are hiding and waiting for you to leave. If it looks hurt, you should not try to handle it yourself. You should tell a park ranger, your parents, a veterinarian, or other adult that will know the proper way to safely handle the situation. Thanks for joining us today. Until next time. Weren't those animals great? 
Now, can you tell me which two of those animals are not native to Conejo Open Space? That's right, it was the desert tortoise and the porcupine. They live in different habitats. When you come to open space, remember that the wild animals, this is their place, this is their home. This is where they live. Do not approach them or take them home. They do not make great pets. Please, if you see an injured animal, tell a ranger or an adult or someone, a wildlife rehabilitator, who can then go ahead and take care of them. Okay, please, allow the animals to be wild and enjoy your open space. Mm -hmm.